Good day YouTube. Welcome to my channel. My name is Darren and my amateur radio call sign is N4VFR. In this video, I'm going to make a loop antenna that's going to be directional so that I could hunt down power line noise or any other RFI sources. Here are some of the materials I'll be using. This is a uh, PL259 to uh, a T connector to two SO239s. We have uh, PL259 connectors. This is specifically for RG8, RG213, or LMR400. Got two of those. And then I have this here, SO239 to BNC connector. And heat shrink. Measuring tape. And I have LMR 400. I had a spare cable here. And maybe you can use RG 213 or RG 8. Okay, I don't have a workshop, so I'm here just in my shack. All right, we're going to measure uh, 90 uh, centimeters. So I want to come to the end here, just measure 90 centimeters. I don't have the right tools. I was going to use diagonal cutters, but then it would leave like a little diagonal cut. I went to my mom's gardening toolbox and I want to use some prune trimmer and uh, cut it. So I got the mark right there. Nice clean cut. Just like that. Now we're going to mark the middle of the coax of uh, 45 centimeters. Now that we have the middle marked, we're going to mark 10 millimeters or one centimeter on either side. Now we're going to score around and basically our main purpose is to remove the outer sheath. That's one side and here's the other side. Okay, next I'm going to cut it through the middle just to only remove the black outer sheath. Next, uh, we're going to cut the uh, shielding area with some good side cutters. So this LMR 400 has a another shield here. I'm going to remove that as well. Might have to use the razor blade and score around it. Just like that. Make sure there's no loose strands. Now get your heat shrink and then route the heat shrink through one end. And we're going to get a heat gun and and then uh, shrink the heat shrink. All 
Okay, so now this is what it looks like. We have the the grounding or the shield removed from the center. We got the heat shrink on. Time to take a break. The coffee is now cold. Now with the length of the PL259, we're just, let's take this apart. We're going to just eyeball the length of it and cut the outer black protection. Just like this. Okay, so that's removed. We have to put this through the crimping portion. So, there you go, got it in. Now, pull the braid back. I'm going to take my straight edge or my razor. I'm going to cut away the other shield, the foil portion. Okay, now I'm going to trim just some of this loose strands of shielding. Okay, I'm going to trim approximately about a half inch. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at where the center pin is located onto the connector just get an estimate length and just eyeball it so it looks like I need to cut it right about here and all I'm doing is going to cut the center uh, not cut all the way through but just cut off the um, the center insulation and then slowly pull it off. There you go. Now we take the PL259, slide it through. The, the outer shield here is gonna go on the inside where the shielding is located. So we're just gonna Snug it, put underneath there. See? Now you can see the center center conductor come protruding through. Uh, I got it on. I moved the outer sleeve up against and button against the PL259. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to crimp this so it doesn't uh, move. I know it's not going to pull out of its socket because we know we've got solder in there. Let me let me put this on the floor and, and then stomp on this handle. I didn't quite stomp on it but I applied a lot of pressure and uh, we yeah we got it crimped on. Okay so this is this is the good thing that we didn't <laughs> we didn't do the other end because you see on this DX engineering uh, connector I can't put it in 
uh, it doesn't go allow me to go put it in. So what I need to do is I need to come back from the the back side, the other end, and then route it through just like this. Go through the uh, center where we have the, uh, the heat shrink. It fits through. Now I can screw it on. There you go. Now we're going to work on the other connector, the other end of this loop. Remember, let's not forget to put the outer sleeve on or else we're going to be stuck and we have to do this all over again. And then the crimping shield that needs to go in there. Okay, now that's safe. Next is we're just going to do like we did it earlier. We're just going to use a PL259 just to get a rough estimate and take your exacto knife or a straight razor edge and then we're just going to score to take out the uh, the black uh, shield the protective shield here on this end of the connector I'm just gonna cut uh, maybe about a quarter inch from the uh, the end here from the end of the black to the shield just cut about a quarter inch we're basically taking all of this shield off Okay, I'm just going to pull some of this shielding back a little bit like this. I'm going to use my straight edge and we're going to cut uh, the aluminum uh, foil from the uh, center conductor there. All right, so I just got the shielding back a little bit here. What we're going to do is we're just going to cut the center conductor because it's not going to be terminated. So let me get those uh, shears again. I don't have the right tools, so we got some pruning shears. Again, this is not terminating, so I'm just going to make a nice clean cut. Look at that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to continue to put the PL259 into position. So it's going to go underneath here. And I'm going to take my snips and take off these loose strands. There's not going to be any soldering in the center pin. That's not going to be terminated. So now I'm going to move the sleeve up the coax here and then I'm going to crimp this with my DX Engineering crimpers. So now I got it crimped. I'm just going to take a uh, Sharpie marker and I'm just going to mark this as an indication that this side of the connector is not terminating. So this is how it looks like now. I have the center, all right, the middle of the loop. The, the shields are not connected together and uh, we have one mark where it's not terminating and this one is the normal PL259. So the next step is, if you get one of those uh, T connectors, this is what we're going to use and let's connect that really quick. Depending on your radio, for example, uh, this Yesu FT3D, if you're going to use this as your receiver, uh, this one looks like it uses an SMA connector, so you would have to, to come up with an adapter to connect your radio. Um, right now I don't have a 
RG58. So I'm using a BNC connector that's connected to my uh, ACOM, no, ICOM radio. This is an airband radio. So uh, the ICA22 right here. And I'm going, this is my airband radio that I use and when I was a pilot for uh, flight instructing. So I'm gonna tune to a frequency of uh, 136 and that's how I'm gonna try to detect some noise. All right, check it out. Can you see the frequency? Uh, 136 decimal nothing. This is my ICOM A22 airband radio. So how this works is right now you're looking through me through the loop. Signals going back and forth through the loop, that's the null area. So say if my camera is the RFI source and I'm going to turn this loop, at this point when the plane is actually pointing to you, um, that's and I'm, I have a strong signal or I can see or listen to the noise, that's the direction of the RFI either to you or the camera or to that direction. So here's a quick demonstration. I have an LED lamp that I'm using here. See, it's pretty bright. And they're normally noisy, right? So let me uh, give you the, the audio. And right now, this is the null. You're hearing the white noise on AM. 136 decimal zero megahertz. As I turn this, point it towards the light, you will hear the RFI. Now it's nulled out, turning it back again. You hear it? It's like a, a hum. So, yeah, it, it's working up close, but if you're gonna be hunting out, um, seeking power line noise, uh, stand by. I'm gonna try to test this uh, out in the open and to see if we can pick up some RFI noise. Cool beans, <laughs> completed the direction finding loop antenna for HT. You don't have to connect it like this. It's probably better to have a RG58 connection. Uh, you're gonna need some adapters, obviously. And then just use your hand to actually rotate the, an the antenna so you don't put stress on your antenna mount because you may destroy it. Hey guys, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please consider to subscribe. Leave me a like and a comment and a notification bell so you get notified when I post new videos. My name is Darren. My amateur radio call sign is N4VFR73 and I'll see you on the next video.